Well, we're always trying new things out here on our YouTube channel, and this is something a little bit different. It's a little bit of a bonus message. I just preached Kingdom Clout Part 2. It's a message about the Father saw. And there was this whole section of the sermon that I only got to when I preached it on Saturday night. That wasn't the message that went online. So I thought what we do is take that, that section of the sermon, that part of the message from that Saturday night sermon, and share it with you here today on YouTube. So I hope it blesses you, gives a little bit more context for the message that we're preaching. But even if you didn't see the original message, I think this stands alone. Join me in Luke chapter 15. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so we can keep content coming to you. Now enjoy this message. When you think about our need for validation, it's important to understand that if you don't get it from within, you will always require it from without. That will keep you unstable. That will keep you always you know, dependent on the whims of people and whether or not they had a good day or whether or not their Cheerios were stale as to whether or not they're nice to you. And so it has to be a, a, a practice or a habit from the inside of receiving from God what you need. Because usually if, if you are bad at celebrating yourself, you will not be able to celebrate others. Do me a favor. If you are like me in this way, if you have a hard time celebrating your own success. Stand up. Well, that's the whole church. Well, y'all sit down. Y'all need the rest of this message more than I thought. Really? Because like, even we went for a hike yesterday to Crowder's Mountain, and I was, I was, uh, I was way ahead of Holly, just so you know. Just so far ahead of her. We had uh, AirPods in and uh, we lost the connection. I was so far ahead of her. And uh, I was like, keep up. Come on, you know. And this is the difference between me and Holly, okay? This is it, all in one little uh, uh, anecdote. She goes, uh, she goes, the view's getting good. <laughs> Who cares about the view? I'm trying to get to the top. And that's been why she's been so good for me along the journey of starting this church. And, you know, I'm, I'm 17 steps ahead, but she's pointing out, you know, like, hey, this is pretty cool. You might want to look at it before you just keep charging up there. There's, there's no reward for you beating your record time. And then. You know, not only can I not stop and appreciate the view because I'm so focused on the destination, that'll preach. But also, sometimes I, uh, I'm scared to celebrate. I'm scared to celebrate. It's scary to me because then I think that I might get complacent. When, when you get in that space, like the enemy can only distract you or discourage you. And when you do it to be seen by people, you are always now, especially in our world, just one click or one view away from somebody who's doing it so much better. Now, you can't think about celebration in the Bible, really, without coming across this classic scripture. And you can't think about the kingdom of God without thinking about this parable. If this were a Led Zeppelin anthology, this would be the stairway to heaven of the parables that Jesus told. <laughs> the greatest hit of all the parables that he told to show what the kingdom was like. See, you can't see the kingdom of God. You can see the kingdoms of this world. You can't see the kingdom of God. You can see what I wear on the outside. You can't see what I wear as my attitude on the inside. You can see whether or not you know, I achieved a certain status. You can see that, but you can't see whether or not I'm secure in who I am. So Jesus had this habit of taking a visible uh, example. And then he would illustrate an invisible reality through a parable. And what he was showing us is that the invisible is often more real than the visible. Okay? That sometimes the stuff that we collect that we say is real is less real than the stuff that we neglect because we can't see it. And let me slow down for a moment. I'm talking about your state of mind. I'm talking about your relationships with others. I'm talking about 
the way that you process disappointment, those things, the way that you treat people who can't do anything for you, those things. And what he's saying through the parables is, look, you have this visible kingdom world, but there is an invisible kingdom within you that is more important than the kingdom around you. It's a different kind of kingdom, much different than the Jewish people who he came to deliver had expected. Often in his parables, he would set up a construct, but it was really a head fake because right when they thought they knew who the good guy was in the story, he would reverse it to show that the one that you hated is the one that the kingdom welcomes. Even in Luke's gospel, it is called the outsider accounts because there are so many examples of people who were outside the kingdoms of men but were brought into the kingdom of God. And if you have felt invisible and insignificant, this kingdom is for you. His most retold and misunderstood parable concerns someone whose name we don't know, but we just call him the prodigal son. He was wasteful with his father's money. And in Luke 15, the Bible says that one day he went to his father and said, I want my share of the inheritance. Now, the younger brother, this brother, would get a third. The older brother would get two thirds. The Bible says something interesting in Luke 15. I believe it's verse 11. Is that the first verse I gave you? There was a man who had two sons. And the younger one said to his father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. I only need to show you that verse for the last word in it, them, them. They both got their share. Now I want to show you this, but I want to go slow enough that it doesn't just go, whoosh, you know, you are already thinking about Q shack focus on the sermon. It goes, it goes right over our head that it says them. They both got their share. But the younger one, who got less than the older one by birthright, took his. And the Bible describes his plight. And I've heard many sermons on this young man. It's often used to speak to those who have run away from God in a visible way. That they've, they've, they've got a drug addiction, or maybe sex has like taken over their life, or or there's something controlling them, like they've made some bad decisions and they've dropped out and they've really blown it. And we'll, we'll preach about this, this son who went away with his one third of the inheritance. And, and here's a recap, just in case you forgot what he did with, with his money. Verse 13, please. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. We can only imagine how wild he was. But what we do know about his decision to leave his father's house and to chase something else that seemed better than where he was is where it ended up. Verse 14. After he has spent everything, because see, people will be good to you as long as you are good for them. But after he had spent everything and he was no longer picking up the check and he was no longer buying the appetizers, and he was no longer giving the rides but needing one. There was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. Verse 15. So he went and hired himself out to be a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. And he longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. No one gave him. Have you come to the point in your life where people stopped giving you the validation that you needed? It might be that God is trying to point you back to himself for what you never should have depended on people for to begin with. Preach for it! You got to validate yourself. And when he got to that low point, he came to his senses. You know, he said, this is crazy. I'm scrolling, clicking, 
posting, deleting, scrolling, clicking, posting, deleted, and everybody else on this stream is as thirsty as I am. I'm going back to my father. I'm going back where there's bread. I'm going back where there's warmth. I'm going back where I got a bed. I'm going back where I was accepted. He was like, my father's servants have it better than me out here. I'm starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. You see how this insecurity gets us to a place where we now, uh, we, we now connect our worth to our behavior. So when you put your self-worth in status, when you lose status, you lose your sense of worth. He's like, I'm going to go back. I'm going to make a speech. And maybe dad will hire me to be a servant. I don't know. It's the only thing I got. I don't really have any other options. I searched the whole world. I'm hungry. And this is what touched me that made me want to get up here and preach the sermon. He got up and went to his father, verse 20. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw. The father saw. The father saw. He saw past his mistakes. He saw past his decisions. He saw past his immaturity. He saw past his foolishness. He saw past his stench. He saw, back, he saw past his torn clothes. He saw past his tired eyes. And he saw a son. For all of the unseen, I want you to notice that the father saw the son before the son said a word to the father. His father saw him and was filled with compassion. He didn't see a slave. He saw a son. And he ran to him and threw his arms around him and kissed him, which was not only unexpected but undignified. Yet the heart of this message is that I came to tell somebody the father saw. When you understand that the father saw, then it doesn't matter what people see. And they might have called you this or that, or have defined you by one decision in your life, and you may even have defined yourself by that. But the father saw beneath the surface. The father saw. He always sees. Your father.
who sees what is done in secret. The father saw. He didn't see what was on the boy. He saw what was in the boy. And he called him back like God is doing with you today under the power and the influence of the preached word of God is that he sees you. He sent me to tell you, I see you. I see you. Other people see what you're showing them. I see what you hide. And I want you. I see you. I know you. I want you. When you have this revelation that the father saw what people couldn't see, you are no longer limited to their opinions or even defined by their decrees. The father did not need to ask permission of all of the people who worked at the house to see whether his son could get a robe. He did not need to ask for a vote to see if he should be allowed back on the island. The father did not need to consult with a committee to see whether or not he could cook a hamburger for his son. In fact, the first thing he said was, quick, bring the best robe. Remind him who he is. Remind her who she is. Remind them who they